Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. Finally got around to making one. I've been talking about it for a while. Made myself a pipe bamboo. Uh, I'm going to show you how I made it, and I'm going to show you a few tricks you can do with it. Stick around. Okay, let's get started. This is what I got. I've been gathering this stuff up now a while. I have a bunch of this stuff. It's all racking and uh, it's uh, pipe racking. And uh, I turn around and just hauled in a couple of pieces of it. I probably got about, I don't know, five or six pieces of that out there. Uh, this looks to be like an old water pipe with a plastic coating on it, which I got to remove. And this here is uh, another piece of round pipe. I think that was uh, used in a parking lot for like around a fire hydrant or something and it broke off so <clears throat> they removed it but I scrounged all this stuff over the last couple of years and it's been kicking out behind the garage for a while and I said to myself now I'm building that uh, Toyota and I'm going to have to make a transmission tunnel and drive shaft tunnel and stuff like that in it so I said now it's time to, to go ahead and start making something making one of these uh, pipe anvils, uh, first time I've seen one, uh, Gene Winfield built it. Um, I've seen a number of guys online now just after building, building them basically the same way, but he's the guy that's known for these pipe anvils. He's built a lot of homemade tools. Uh, great old guy, I met him a number of times over the years out to the Atlantic Nationals. But uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, it's a simple little uh, roller for uh, rolling uh, steel on. So, uh, First thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this up, get the piece of plastic off of that. I'm going to cut the pieces to the length that I'm going to make. And then I'm going to come back and tell you what I got done and cut and measurements and whatever like that. So if you want to make one, you can probably make one yourself. So I'm going to go cut all that up there now. I'm here getting ready now to cut off the length of the big pipe. And I figured I'd stop and show you. I have the length marked off right here with a pencil mark. And then you're going to wonder like, okay, we got to cut this right around this in a circle. All I did is I took a piece of paper. This is stuff I have there for for like papering up cars and whatever. You can use bristol board or whatever you want to. All I got to do is just lay it on the line. I went and squared it up. Just taped it onto it. And I'm just going to run it around it. And that's how I squared it up. Is when you bring it around to each other. You line it up to itself again. Like so. Now you got a perfect line going right around the piece of pipe to cut it off. I got three of them all cut up. I'll cut close to the same length. Um, the overall length of this is um, about 47 inches. And why I chose 47 inches? Uh, this second pipe here, this one right here, uh, I never cut this off. This is the length this was. This is the shortest piece that I had. So what I did is I took that measurement and I made one for there and one for there. Now you don't have to have it as wide as this. Uh, you can have it you know, as, as big as you want it. Uh, I just got it made big. I don't know, it was, just saves on time. I haven't got to cut this piece. I only had to cut this piece and cut this piece here. Uh, each pipe, uh, the biggest one is, what, six and a half inches. Next one down from that is about four and a half inches. And the one down from that is about inch and seven eighths that one is so that's the diameters of the pipes uh they don't have to be that precise in terms of sizes or whatnot it's just the key is to have a large one a um, medium one and a small one you can go smaller again and i got ideas of probably putting attachments on this later on uh but for now i'm just going to make it from these three pipes uh, i'm going to put the big one on this the big one in the middle this one on this side and then i'm going to move this one over here I'll, that's the way I'm going to mount it. I'm just going to lay it on the bench like it is here now. And I'm going to make three of them fit like that. And now, um, to separate them, that's all I got. It's four old washers. All I'm going to do is, in between this here now, we got no gap. That's the way it looks when they're put together. What you do is you take a, a, a washer, have you know, something half thick, not too thin. 
and just lay it in there like that and that gives you a little bit of a gap see a little bit of a gap now i'm going to weld this on right here and i'll weld another one on the other end down here i'll weld another washer here and i'll do the same with the other pipe over here i'll weld that on and i'll weld all that together first before i go any farther i'll put a nice heavy bead on it here and there and on the other side as well so then that all that's done and then i got to make a stand for it so that's basically it all i went and did here is i just cleaned this up with the big old grinder i went and hauled the plastic off it and grinded this off cleaned it up you could probably sand it and clean it and well, whatever you got around right same with this one here it would have been nice to start with three brand new pieces of pipe uh, but this is just scrap i got lying around this one here was pretty rusty um, that one there just had um, the plastic coating on it with a bit of a glue and I just grinded it all off, cleaned it all up as best I could. So what I'm going to do next here now, I'm going to go mount the washers and I'm going to weld this section here together and have this done. So then I can work on making the legs. So here's all I got done. I got the washer put in there and I got the voice grips clamping the two pieces together. You can actually see how close it comes together there. And then now there's a gap going to the full end of it. You see it down here, I turn the light on, you actually see the gap. You see the type of gap that's down there, that's from the washers. And I got another washer put on this in here and clamped on. So that's be done there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld these two washers. I'm going to put a nice bead across here, down the other side, and across the bottom over there as well. So there it is welded on the ends as well as on both sides as well at this side as well as well and on the ends so now you can see there's a gap here i got a piece of scrap steel here and that'll fit down between there like so and then i can bend it or bend it either way right on that one there so that'll give me that radius and then this will give me this radius now i want to bend smaller stuff what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do the same process again on the other side with the smaller pipe. There it is clamped in place with the uh, washer. Gap in between it there as well. There's one piece of steel. Oh, there it is. See? It'll fit in between there like that. For that radius. And I have another washer clamped down here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna weld two of them up. Right there. There you have it, all welded up on the ends, on the other side. Over here is all welded up on the ends, on the other side. And that's basically the tool itself. That's all you have to do. Now you don't have to have as heavy a pipe as what I got here. I only got it this heavy because it's what I picked up for nothing. All this here was uh, stuff I scrounged here and there. Um, I'd say because you're only doing sheet metal you can actually build this out of exhaust pipe This one here is like major heavy duty That's really heavy pipe And I don't think there's any need to have it as thick as this This one here you probably want a heavier pipe because exhaust pipe would be too thin for that one but Larger pipes yeah. I've seen fellas use um, Oxygen acetylene tanks uh, It's a fairly big unit to use like an old tank itself there's empty of course and then they caught it down and used it for this it's uh, got to do with making do with what you have now what I got to do is I got to make a set of legs for it so it, uh, it sits on the floor I'm gonna set this up because I got it this long here I'm gonna make use of this in a number of different ways I'm gonna use this cavity here I'm gonna store stuff in it I got a bunch of steel down here round pipe and stuff like that I'll put that in this so it'll give me more room underneath my bench 
find a place for it. So now I got to go uh, figure out a set of legs for it. All right, going over a few things. All I wanted to do is have a simple little stand. Um, this is Schedule 40 pipe, that more of that scrap pipe that I had there, so it's pretty heavy. All I intend to do is all I'm going to do is make a little T-handle like that. And that will be the base. And then she'll go up and she'll lay on top of that there. And I'll see how strong it is when it gets it made when it's done. So what I got to do now is I got to cope the end of the pipes to fit around this here, like the way I had this one here done. I got this one here ready to go. As you can see, I just done that with a grinder. That fits right in there like so. That's the way that fits there. Now I'm going to show you how I does them. Um, there's a number of different ways. People do it different ways. And this is how I do it. Alright, all I do is I just lay it on the bench here. Um, perpendicular to each other. And as you can see, that there's a big gap here. Because it's a pretty big pipe. If you go right to the middle of the pipe, it gets uh, really thin out on the end of it. I like leaving a bit of a chunk here on the end of it. So when I welds around, it comes down and it goes around this way. So I'll I give myself about a half an inch, which will come in about here from there. Now, all I got to do is, here's my marking here. I got, I got this end of a tape like this here. And all I'm going to do... I'm going to mark the center of it here, where I'm going to start with. This will be my starting point. That point there will be coming up to there. And as you can see, I got it marked there. And uh, all I'm going to do is go to the opposite side. Take the square here. Run it straight across. Eyeball it. I, like, I don't get crazy with having everything perfect. Because you can, you can fine-tune it after the fact. That there now will be my two opposite ends. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you can do the other end and do the same thing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this uh, and just use this as my mark here. So I know as I'm coming down a half an inch. So I have two points now on the opposite side of it to come down a half an inch. I'll just mark it here. And I'll mark it over here, half inch. Now all I want to do is I'm going to put that in my voice and I'm going to put this on a rough 45 degree angle. I don't measure nothing. Okay? It's, a lot of it over the years has just been eyeballing things. I like keeping all my cuts straight. So that's roughly on a 45 degree angle as you can see there. That's the angle that I got it on. And maybe a bit more. There. That's better. So I have my center point here. It goes down to the center of it. There's my middle. So I'm going to come back from that, come back from that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the grinder perpendicular, hold this perfectly straight, and just cut that off. Simple as that. Because it's so hard to try to cut them on angles. I got the point put on the angle, I'll just cut this straight. There's my center line. There's my inch and a half inch mark. I'm going to cut that perfectly straight off there now. There's my little mark again. There you have the fish melt, as I like to call them. It's not perfect, but it'll work. The depth is the same on both sides. I'll just grind that out now and finish that off. Now you see the thickness is all in the pipe is right here. I'm going to grind all this down in here so it goes this way. As if you look at it this way, you can see that's tapered up that way. I'm going to grind this this way. I'm going to grind this flat this way and grind flat that flat that way. And do the same on the other side as on this side. All right, there it is all grinded down. All I did is I beveled back these little edges after I grinded them down a small bit. I'll show you that when we lace the pipe on top of it. And that's the extent of that. 
he's laying pipe on top of it like so. And there's my fit. Right? And then you can uh, put a square against it. Like so here. And come up to it. And it's not a half bad little uh, thing. It's a small bit off. But hey man, I'm not perfect. That's not bad there, is it? Just lay it on top of it. That's a rough cut with a grinder. What I'll do now is I'll tack four corners on this now. One here, probably one over here, and one on the back side, and one over here. And uh, then I'll weld it right up solid. Got that fit together and laid flat on the bench there. All I got is one of them 45 degree magnets. You can pick them up at uh, Prince's Auto. Yeah, I got two or three different ones of them. <coughs> Lay that place there and then just run the uh, pipe in place and square it up on it. So you're good there. Like so. There you go. So, rough estimate. I want that off center, didn't I? Where's the center at? 12, 6 is there. I'll leave it one inch off center. For the weight. I got 20, that's 10. We should sit there at 9. I'm off center in it because the front of the, or one side of it, is, it's got a lot more weight than the other. So, I'm trying to find the center of the weight. Do it. Nine in the middle. That should be good. Now all I'll do is I'll put a couple tacks on that. So all I did is put a tack there, tack there, tack over there, and a tack there. Each time I tacked it, I went to the opposite side. Like I never worked my way around, I tacked it here, tacked it on the other side, and then here and here, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in, now I'm going to weld up this side here, and then go weld up the other side. There it is, all welded up. Now I've got this flipped upside down and I got it uh, held up on this end here just so it looks so it's half level across here where I had it. So it's even in a bench. I'm not going to get carried away with making this perfect because once I get one leg on it, the other leg is going to go where it's going to go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm making sure I got the, the big end up on this side. End, I should say, and I'm going to wing this, this first one. I'm going to make sure it looks half sensible. You can get crazy with this or not. I'll put a couple of tacks on it and I'll see how I like it. I'll stand back and look at it. Make a decision from there. I'm just looking at it here, looking up across it, see if it looks half straight. Uh, that's close enough there. It looks to be pretty good this way. That's close enough. I'm not getting overboard with it here. Welder on. You got that welded on all the way around. It's nice and solid. Now, what I got to do now is I got to set this up on the floor to put the second one on. 
because the second one will line up with this one. It doesn't really matter if this, like, if this is this way, this way or this way twisted a small bit because it really doesn't. I'm just trying to have it half level across the bottom side of it. So if it's off a small bit, it really don't, won't matter anyway. As long as the two legs are flat on the floor, well, that's it. Sometimes you forget to turn the, the camera on. I had this all set up here, showing how to measure it all up, and I wasn't recording. But anyway, I got this side tack well in place. I used the floor as the level, and leveled it off back. This is my garage floor. I was very particular on it when I had it built. Uh, it's very straight and smooth. And now I got a tack well in place, and I'll weld it up here now. There it is, one pipe anvil. I was a bit concerned about the legs, fear I was going to have to put more bracing and everything on it, but uh, it's really sturdy, worse being the schedule 40 pipe, and I can rock it back and forth, and it'll stay good, All right? It was nice and solid there. See the way it's all put together there? Just pretty simple. I didn't want too big a legs on it. You would think to put wider legs on it, uh, probably be wider, but if you look at this here, it's a little bit wider than here, and a little bit wider than here, and because I want to be able to put this against the wall somewhere, and not have legs sticking out. I have problems with a few of the things I've after making, the legs are too big on them. And uh, I was concerned that it would be a bit top heavy. It is top heavy if I tip it over, but uh, I think it's gonna be solid enough for what I'm gonna do on it. And if there's any issues, I'll just add to it. I'll put in a more bracing, I'll put longer legs on it or whatnot. But we're scheduled 40 pipe. I was gonna put diagonals there, no, I'm not gonna bother with it. I was gonna put a bar across there, no, I'm not gonna bother with it. I'd like to get some flat bar, probably like three inch flat bar, and weld to it and weld them together there. So you got something to step on, so when you're bending it, so it doesn't go away from me or whatnot. You can see the gap there now. And the gap over on this side. I'm gonna play around with this now, show you what you can do with it. Now one of the first things, one of the main reasons why I wanted to build this is that over the years I've done a lot of pro street projects and have to make transmission tunnels and whatnot for it. I had uh, a rough piece of, uh, scrap piece of steel here now, I, I got a grid made. As you can see it's like a fan type thing, the lines are closer together down here and farther apart here. That's just a reference line to go by. All you gotta do is you put it into this and you start rolling it over. Turning one end of it more than the other. Do it a bit 
bigger. Give you more of an illusion to see. As you can see, the back here now is too small with the front end, so now I can turn it around and I start working through the small one to do the back side. This is always something that was never very easy to do. I had to do it on the bench with a piece of pipe clamped on the bench. So you got a cone shape. Smaller on this end, bigger on this end. Okay. That's the way you make a transmission tunnel. Nice smooth contour all the way along it. Okay. Soft roll bends. Okay. Now sometimes you'll have like a bottom of a quarter panel that got a roll or a rocker panel or something like that on it. This is just a small sample of it. I went over the brake and I bent it in a 90. Bring this up through this way here. Okay. Hold that there. Now you got a nice contoured rolled edge for like a rocker panel. Sometimes you might just want a full large bend. Fold right over and get yourself a nice loop bend. You want to get a larger one. Go on the back side. Install that there. Hold that right around. And you got a larger one. Just playing around with it on the small one there. Roll it around. Give you an idea of the drive shaft tunnel. Here you go. Just a quick little playing around with it. You got the nice roll top edge. You put a flange on it. You leave this side a little bit longer. You can bend the flange on it after the fact. Okay. Last but not least, I can store stuff in it. Because <laughs> it's such a big pipe, I can put stuff inside of it. But that's basically it. That's the makings of a uh, pipe anvil. Uh, the ones that Gene Winfield and them do um, is roughly the same. Um, could be a little bit different design. I've seen a number of them online. Uh, everybody got their own design. This is the way I want to do it. What I think I might end up doing is I might end up drilling a couple of holes in the top of this shit so I can put three eight bolts down through it. I put smaller diameter pipe up here that I can bolt down to that I can mix tighter loops. Uh, I'll just show you. I'll put two bolts, say, in something like that that'll slide down through there and bolt on with a ratchet, and then I can put a real tight bend on it. I could actually go, I can actually make uh, clamps in. I could probably even go smaller in that again. Like if you ever wanted to put, uh, like, cl make clamps to mount on your chassis rails to hold fuel lines or whatever on. Something simple as that. And all that'll do is just bolt, a bolt will go down through it and you just lift up on it to take it off. And you can tighten it up on it as it goes down. You can reach in through here with the ratchet, see? That's one idea I got for it. Other than that, I've been wanting one of these for years. But anyway, that's it. Hope the tips were good. And until next time.